Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Roofing Contractors Best of Success podcast show. I'm RC Editor-in-Chief Art Eisner, and I'm really glad you joined us for a unique conversation today uh, sponsored by Sunbelt Business Brokers. I'm here with roofing industry veteran Greg Nolan, CEO of Nolan's Roofing in Central Florida. Hi, Greg. Thanks for being here. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I appreciate it. Uh, well, I, I know you've got about three decades of business experience in the roofing industry, but for anyone that may not know you, tell us briefly about how you got your start in the business. Uh, well, I used to run a, uh, a stocking business, a drywall stocking business slash roof tile stocking business. And a friend of mine that I was stocking uh, tile for, he gave me the opportunity and told me that I would, you know, if I got a... Uh, uh, roofing license and basically started roofing that I would, uh, that he would give me a, uh, credit limit of a million dollars. So I, I did that and I didn't get the credit limit of the million dollars, but, <laughs> um, I started off, uh, slow and we did pretty good with, we did, uh, mostly, uh, uh, labor only type, uh, roofing work for Ryland homes and a few other builders at mm -hmm. the time. And, uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, so you had the entrepreneurial, you know, spirit to kind of jump out on your on your own and uh, uh, try roofing out. What was really the uh, what was the plan for you at that point, or how did you see your ideal career situation working out that early on? Um, I mean, at that time, I didn't see an ideal career situation going on. I mean, I just. Uh... I was just trying to earn a living for my family and and uh, all that, and I was still uh, young at business and young in general. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, we we uh, we did very well at that part of uh, that kind of roofing where we did a lot of labor only, and uh, you know, we did well at that time, and and uh, you know, uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, you, like many roofing contractors, had to overcome some significant challenges, uh, particularly around 2008 and the Great Recession, right? Uh, can you tell us about uh, that experience and what changed your company's trajectory? Yes. So, like I said, I did a lot of labor only at the time. And in 2008, when, uh, you know, uh, when the economy kind of collapsed, I uh, I had a whole bunch of nothing but labor work out there, uh, you know, in the tune of a couple of million dollars that was owed to us. And uh, uh, we ended up having to go out of business because a bunch of builders filed bankruptcy and didn't pay us at the time. So we ended up filing bankruptcy and, and uh, you know, and then after a while we started another roofing company after I sat down with the board of uh, uh, Florida uh, and uh, started another roofing company and we swore we would never let one person put me out of business again. So we now we work for nothing but homeowners and we do not work for builders anymore. Uh, very few builders. Uh, our, our majority of our work is homeowners. Got it. So that that was really the key change in in your commitment to this is going to be our business model now, and we're not going to rely on on the other builders that might you know come and go as the economy comes and goes. Yeah. So now I have pretty much about thirty five hundred customers a year instead of twelve. So <laughs> it really makes a difference when somebody doesn't pay. It's only a twenty thousand dollar paycheck instead of you know a million dollars, you know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. it's a whole different way of doing business. Wow. Well, tell me more about your business today. How, how many employees are there and what are your specialties? And if you're you're comfortable talking about what uh, uh, you mentioned, your customer base, what type of annual revenue are we talking about? Yeah, so uh, we do about, you know, uh, last year we did about 39 million in uh, revenue and uh, we have about, 80 employees and we use some subcontractors to do the uh, actual labor for putting the roofs on and uh you know uh you know it just 
it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to explain that one <laughs> Okay. And we're back uh, with Greg, who's now in his office after some brief technical difficulties. Greg, you were telling me uh, about your business. Uh, give me a couple of key things that you think make your company successful. Uh, yes. Yeah, so as we know that uh, there's a lot of storm work in Florida. So we do a lot of uh, insurance storm work, um, uh, which is very, you know, there's a lot of it out there, so that's one thing that makes it successful. Uh, we have a very good branding for our business too, uh, which makes it successful. I mean, we we've, we've uh, you know we're always on TV channel nine. We have billboards all over the place. Uh, we put a lot of money back into advertising, uh, which you know the that actually helps a lot. I mean, when customers actually see us, they see a company that they're familiar with. So they go ahead and talk to us and, and they're very, uh, very easy to talk to. You know, instead of just cold calling somebody, it's really hard when they don't know who you are. So, I mean, in my opinion, that's probably the two or three things that's uh, making our company successful is the branding and a lot of storm work. Uh, Greg, I understand you've got some family that's also working in the business. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, I have two sons involved in our business. Uh, my son Gregory, which is the oldest son, uh, he's a, a he's a top salesman for our company. He does a, a lot. Uh, he sells about three million in sales a year for just himself. Which you know, at, when you're selling individual homeowners at twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars a pop, that's that's basically hard to get three million dollars. That's a lot of jobs to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Jet, basically, Jet, uh, at the age of 10 years old, Jet is now 20, but at the age of 10 years old, he started racing. And uh, he started racing go-karts, and then he went to uh, cars, and then uh, he did very well at it. And we, he races some uh, NASCAR trucks. He races some stadium super trucks for Robbie Gordon sometimes, but his his love for uh, super late model racing is something that he loves to do. And uh, he's a part time sale salesman here at Nolan Drifting, and he's following his brother's footsteps. And his brother uh, uh, basically is one of the best salesmen out there. And, and uh, Jed is coming up really fast, catching up to him. He might end up passing Gregory one day. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Well, he is uh, he is a racer after all. Yes. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see that roofing is is uh, is his side hustle. Yes. Uh, Greg, you recently made a decision to sell your roofing company. Uh, I'm curious, did you have a su succession plan in place? And when did you really start se uh, to seriously consider uh, making the sale? Yeah, so I mean, I really didn't have a succession plan in place. I uh, I basically determined that this is a is a monster of a company and it's not as easy to run and it's it's it can be stressful at some times. So I was thinking about selling the company a couple of years ago and I ended up calling Claudio with Sunbelt at, which really helped me a lot. He really did a great job. Uh, I couldn't have I couldn't have sold this roofing company without Claudio. All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Why don't we bring in Claudio Vilas right now with Sunbelt Business Brokers? Hi, Claudio. How you doing today? Hey, how are you, Art? Uh, Greg, good to see you again. How are you? Nice seeing you. Uh, doing good, Claudio. Yep, we're doing great, and uh, I'm glad you could join us. Tell us a little bit about how you helped Greg through this process, which uh, obviously is, uh, I imagine, not easy. No, it's, it's it's not an easy process. I'm not sure if I helped Greg or he helped me because, you know, thanks to Greg, I really I fell in love with the roofing industry. Uh, the fact that we spent uh, almost uh, – uh, a year working on on, on the company uh, allowed me to learn a lot about uh, the roofing industry. And I, you know, when I met Greg and uh, we started working together, I thought, well, if everybody's like uh, Greg, I, I, this is the place where I want to be. And that's what uh, I decided to do after selling Greg's company. But it was a 
you know, it, it, selling a, a you know a multi-million dollar company is is not easy. It has a lot of different uh, aspects that you have to look at, and that uh, business owners, when they're running their business, they're not really you know paying that much attention. They're paying attention to the quality of the the uh, the roofs they're doing. They're paying attention to the marketing. But when you have buyers coming into the business, they start asking a lot of questions that uh, you got to be ready to answer them. And that, that's what I do. I help uh, Greg, you know, make sure that he's got the right answers for them and prepare the company for that. Got it. And how much attention do you pay to, you know, the values of uh, the contractor and, uh, you know, what he's trying to accomplish either for his business, his legacy, or for his employees and making sure that next step is the right fit for everyone? Well, that, that's a key point, Art, because, um, you know, a company is more than just uh, numbers and, and revenues and, and net income and EBITDA and all that. It, it's people. And uh, the only way you can actually have a successful transition is to have a buyer that's going to either follow or agree with the values of the owners of the company. So when uh, with the when, when we were looking for buyers, we, we had many offers. Remember, Greg, we had a lot of different offers for Greg's company and, you know, with different values, different valuations. But, you know, we took the time to actually uh, look for the buyer that not only was offering the best uh, uh, deal from a uh, terms and, and pr uh, price point of view, but also from a values point of view, that they were going to keep what uh, Greg built because that's why he built it for so many years. Well, and with so much competition out there in the marketplace, and we're not just talking about uh, roofing companies, but mm -hmm. with private equity and other larger, uh, you know, roofers looking to roll up uh, into consortiums, What's your message to roofing contractors in similar situations now uh, where, you know, they may find themselves kind of overwhelmed with all this activity? Yeah, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of money coming in. There's there's millions and millions of dollars coming into the industry. And I think if you have a company that's netting at least a million dollars or more, you seriously should be thinking of selling because uh, for many reasons, first of all, you know, you have buyers that are willing to pay more than, you know, they would pay in a normal situation that happens all the time, you know, supply and demand. So people are looking for companies. Um, private equities typically look at companies that are netting a million dollars or more. So if you're there, you should really um, make sure that at least you give it a thought and you have some some uh, uh, meetings with, with buyers. Number two, you know, make sure that you don't just stick to one buyer. I mean, roofing business owners get hundreds of emails a week saying, I want to buy your company. The truth is 99% of those emails are just automated emails. And there's nobody really on the other side saying, hey, I want to buy really this company. They're just they're just fishing. So you got to make sure that you work with the right team and, and you put the company in a place where actually people will want to buy and pay more for the company. So you need a, a good team of lawyers. You need a good team of accountants. Of course, mergers and acquisitions people that are going to help you walk through this, but it's not just one person, and uh, and, and you got to be ready for it. Uh, Greg, are you still getting those phone calls, those queries from from other people that may not know? You know, you've already made a decision, and what do you tell them? Yeah, I get them every day, all day long, and I actually I I've, I've stopped answering some of them, but uh, <laughs> sometimes some people get get uh, through and I basically just tell them that I've already been taken care of and uh, they should call Claudio. I tell them that all the time, call Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, Claudio's done more for us than than he's actually saying. He's done a great job. Uh, he's made sure that my employees here had a good future, uh, you know, by, by questioning the company that has purchased our company. Uh, we picked the right company for uh, that, and Claudio walked us through that. And also, EBITDA on every uh, on every roofer's uh, plate doesn't really understand what EBITDA is. And there's been many a days that I told Claudio that I can't do this anymore, but he walked me through it, and uh, you know. Uh, he walked me through it and, and, and made it easy for us. He, it, you know, it's not easy. Don't get me wrong, but it, he made it easy for us. He made he really took the time and helped us out a lot. 
Well, Greg, now that you're on the other side, what's next? Uh, have you figured out what you're going to do for your next step? So right now I'm I'm helping the company uh, set up and and basically uh, grow from here. Uh, by the end of this year, we will probably be a ninety million dollar company. Uh, by the end of next year, maybe half a billion. Uh, I don't know where we're going to be from there, but uh, I don't plan on on being here forever. But uh, you know I'm going to stick around and help them out as much as I can. Get it get it set up. Obviously, when you sell a company uh, through an acquisition, their their idea is to resell it in the future. So I'm looking for that second paycheck on our end. But I also bought a racetrack that my son can race at. So that is something that we've always wanted to do. And we ended up buying a racetrack with the money that we made, not all the money, just a part of the money that we made in the sale. And then the rest of it, we invested and Claudio actually helped us uh, get a hold of uh, the right attorneys and all that stuff to invest uh, our money correctly and uh, help put it in a tax shelter and things like that. Wow. So, uh, Claudio, that's uh, it sounds like just an example yeah. of, of uh, you know, some extra or, or, or uh, something that wasn't necessarily just associated with the business sale. Uh is that typical? Uh, well, it's, I, I like to help people when when I see that they've done such a great job to transition. And uh, I, I, I like to give uh, as much support as I can way beyond just the the uh, the, the selling. You know, I, my, my motto is, you know, it's uh, your legacy, my commitment, and I try to live up to it. Um, I have deep, very deep respect for uh, entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs in the uh, roofing industry, but anything that has to do with building a business, creating value, having uh, uh, a legacy of your family and your employees and, and giving work to so many people that I do what I can. I really, really appreciate that. And I try to do my best. Wow. Well, where can roofing contractors find out more? Well, they can call me 954-774-4141, email me at claudio.vilas at sunbeltnetwork.com or to my new website, which is theroofingbizbroker.com that I'm launching in the next few days. Okay. Well, thank you, Claudio and Greg. Thank you as well. I really appreciate the great insight and conversation. Uh, before you head to Claudio's website, please make sure you're staying up to date with the latest news, videos, podcasts, and other featured content on roofingcontractor.com by signing up for our free digital e-magazine and e-newsletter right through our homepage. Stay safe, and we will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye.